Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here in the H&N Digital Center. I'm Dylan Inchetta alongside Ashley Nagaoka and our very own Daryl Huff. Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi is wrapping up his third State of the City address. That's right. The mayor is focusing on what he's calling Honolulu's top wicked problems. It's a term that uh, they used to describe these challenges that are difficult to deal with and that affect, you know, multiple communities. Uh, this is what he had to say about housing and homelessness. And we began by inviting developers, nonprofits, affordable housing experts, and stakeholders to these meetings to help us better understand the history and complexity of our housing shortage. We wanted answers to the following questions. What were the obstacles getting in our way? Our answers to those questions led to the creation of several new programs. First, we developed a bill to incentivize small lot owners to build affordable housing projects throughout our communities, especially in the urban core. Bill 1, which was our administration's first piece of legislation, provides financial incentives after housing units have been constructed and are ready for occupancy. We now have one completed, five under construction, three with permits in hand, and momentum is growing because we have more than 30 projects and counting in the pipeline today. And to further incentivize affordable housing development on small lots, Governor Green has proposed matching $10 million to our city funds. Governor, your proposal has exceptional potential to stimulate additional small lot construction. Homelessness has plagued our city for years, for decades. And when we took office, we knew our approach to handling the homeless crisis needed systemic change. CORE's mission is to engage and improve the quality of life for all people on the streets through compassion, empathy, and professionalism. Based in Chinatown, CORE today employs a team of 30 people led by the unrelenting force of Dr. Jim Ireland that consists today of two program managers, four supervisors, seven community health workers, one physician, two nurses, 11 EMTs, and three support staff, providing most of their care on the streets, in parks, and anywhere homeless individuals can be found. And in fact, happening right now, Mayor Rick Blangiardi is still finishing up his speech. Let's give you a few the moments to listen into what he's saying. Created a dedicated early childhood coordinator position because we strongly believe that all children should have equal access to high quality early childhood opportunities. And to serve in that role, we were very fortunate to find someone with the knowledge and experience that local families will be able to count on. Ted Burke brings to the city a 30-year career in this area. He knows how to level the playing field when it comes to equitable access to early childhood opportunities. And he knows how to engage families and communities as partners for innovation. But Ted knows, and we know, that one person is not enough. That's why we're announcing today the city's plan to establish an Office of Early Childhood Development to work with the public and private Right sectors. there, you just heard him say he is establishing uh, priorities for early childhood development. For more on this analysis now, let's bring in our Daryl Huff. Uh, Daryl, Mayor Blangiardi has been speaking for over about an hour at this point. Uh, that speech started around 11 o'clock. He's really kind of outlining a lot of things in his speech. What are some key takeaways for you? I think that the amount of time he spent talking about homelessness and housing really were hitting the priorities for most people in this city. I think that what struck me about them the most was how much he emphasizes this collaboration. He spent the first three pages of his speech just introducing everybody there, including the mayor, the, the other mayors, the governor, all these other folks. And I think that's sort of his style now, and it probably always been his style. You know, Ash and mm -hmm. I, we worked with him for many years is to bring in a lot of people on a problem. That was always his style. It's clearly what he's doing now. Yeah, and you know, bringing uh, Josh Green into this, uh, having the state contribute to helping solve the city's problems, that's also big as well that he mentioned, gave him a shout out and everything. Yeah, I think that what's uh, really markedly different between this mayor and other mayors that we've had is that you don't see the political rivalries at play so much. Mm -hmm. Like with Caldwell, it was always who's Caldwell going to run against, who he's run against in the past. There were lots of gr grudges to deal with. Mufi Hanneman, there was always grudges to deal with and old um, 
rivalries and is he going to run against me and so on. Keep in mind, you know, Rick Blangiardi's close friend Vicky Cayetano ran against Josh Green for governor and it was a pretty nasty campaign, but all that's sort of forgotten now and he's giving the governor credit, asking for support from the governor and this interstate and city relationship is really key to solving an awful lot of problems. The siloing of the state and the city has been a chronic issue for decades. Yeah, going back to you know his list of wicked problems, what else stood out to you? I think that what's interesting is his willingness to recognize how messed up government is. And that's what he keeps talking about. You know, he, the wicked problems, that's messed up government. Government is not easy. This is a challenge. Um, and he takes it on and he's saying, look, in order for us to address this challenge, there are systemic problems that we need to fix. So he's talking about reorganizing city departments. He's talking about reorganizing DPP, the Department of Planning and Permitting, breaking that apart. Uh, he's talking about, and I think he's gotten to this part, but in his speech he talks about uh, setting aside a special first responders department for EMS and ocean safety. Um, and so a number of times he set up task forces to, to study what's wrong and what to fix. He was very specific about DPP in that. So I think you see him recognizing that you can't just wave a magic wand over the city's problems and have them go away. You have to break it up, rebuild it, and start again. And well, in fact, Daryl, uh, this is some of the outlines, uh, some of the wicked problems outlined in this slide provided by the city. You see the bullet points there, persistent problems that repeatedly plague the city. Uh, incomplete, contradictory, have changing requirements. And we also know he is facing several of these persistent problems, including staffing at HPD. How do we handle um, homelessness here? So a lot of problems discussed here today. Yeah, I think that what you really got is a, on this speech, it is, it is a very long speech, just got to say. He didn't drop, he didn't avoid anything. You know, he, he also talked about rail. He, and one thing that comes through in this speech, I think, is his excitement in dealing with these things. He's legitimately excited about this thing or that thing, and he's legitimately excited about reorganizing departments, which doesn't sound like that much fun, but he seems to be excited about it. I think one of the things that he got a big round of applause for was pointing out the progress on rail. And as a mayor who ran on sort of the conservative side of the spectrum, a lot of people were kind of surprised by how much he has embraced the rail project. He calls it the most fundamental infrastructure project of our time. And he's very excited about it getting to Middle Street, pointing out that it's going to reach two of our biggest employment centers, Pearl Harbor and um, uh, Pearl Harbor and the airport, mm -hmm. by two years from this summer. And so he's legitimately excited about what he's doing. And I, you know, I think that that's catching on with people. And I think the reason he could be like that is because he's not a traditional politician, all mired in all of these rivalries that so many have been before him. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for your insight on this, Daryl.